they are releasing the trailer to us bit by bit. Maybe by 2025 we should have the full thing. Before we start, I would like to say this is the last regular video of the year, because next week I'll be doing an end of the year Q&A answering your questions about the channel, me, Leoric, the weather at Baja California, whatever. Hit me with any question, big or small, stupid or smart in the comments below and I'll try to answer them the best way I can in my next video. Now on to this week's content. I asked you guys what did you want to see me cover next, and the first and obvious answer was the follow-up to the Mysterians, Battle in Outer Space. But since there is nothing logical or obvious about what I do, I think I might pass on this one and save it for another day. The other suggestion I got was King Kong's Capes, and how could I resist talking about Robot Monkey? Then I realized Godzilla vs Kong is just around the corner so I might want to save that one for when the movie releases and try to profit on the hype. With these two films out of question, I was left with one last suggestion, one that had already crossed my mind a couple times through these two years I've been making content, but which I almost always shut down due to it being such an out there and utterly bizarre piece of cinematic work that I honestly didn't know if I would be up to the challenge of extracting meaning out of it or just simply making something interesting for you to watch. I still don't know if I can do it, but hey, I will do my best. What cowboy though? Oh, this one? House or Hauzu in the Japanese original is a 1977 comedy horror movie produced by Toho who wanted to, wait for it, capitalize on the success of a western horror movie, in this case Jaws, and ask screenwriter Nobuhiko Obayashi to make a script along those lines. Now a piece of advice here, this is not a movie you want to explain to you. Not only because, like I said before, it's really hard to be explained, but also because this is the kind of stuff you have to preferably go blind into. The more I talk about it and the more scenes you watch, the less impactful it all will be when you finally get to see it for yourself. So if you've never watched House before, stop this video right now and come back here once you've done so. Back already? Good! <laughs> to make the script he was commissioned to write, Obayashi decided to go to his infant daughter for ideas, as he felt adults were way too bound to what they thought was possible, whereas children did not care for such things and could conceive truly unsettling and bizarre sights something you definitely want for a horror movie. To make things even scarier, he incorporated into it real-world traumas of Japan like, wait for it, the atomic bombings, which had affected Obayashi, a native of Hiroshima, in a personal level. Punctuating the whole thing, it was chosen an English title for the film, something the xenophobic audiences of Japan would certainly frown upon. In a matter of fact, Every element of this movie seems to have been crafted to specifically make people uneasy, and not necessarily in a scary way. Proof of that is the fact that no one at Toho wanted to direct the damn thing, as they felt it would be the end for their careers. Obayashi came forward and suggested himself an experienced and established advertisement director in his own right to helm the project, a proposal rejected by the studio as the man was not part of its staff. Two years passed with the script just sitting at Toho's offices, without ever being touched. It took Obayashi going out in the streets and trying to build hype for the story himself, through word of mouth of his fanbase, and adapting the plot into a manga, a novel, and a radio drama, the last of which being particularly successful and finally convincing Toho to greenlight the movie's production with Obayashi as the director. 
Not that it meant the studio had any hopes for the flick. Apparently, they had just grown tired of losing money with movies that made sense and couldn't care less about doing the same with one that didn't make any. But what is this cursed script that would ruin the career of any director who puts his hands on it? The story is actually pretty simple. It's about this girl, gorgeous, who is pretty, not dealing very well with the fact that her father is getting remarried after 8 years of widowness. She then decides to stay at her aunt's house in the countryside for a while, taking with her 6 close friends. Fantasy, who is always dreaming, Prof, who is smart, Sweet, who is nice, Melody, who can play music, Kung Fu, who can fight, and Mac, who is a... Really? Along for the ride, they bring the Cat Blanche, who looks like the character played by Rue McLanahan in the 1985 hit show The Golden Girls. Together, they travel to Gorgeous Aunt's house, where they will be one by one devoured by the restless spirit of their hostess that inhabits the very walls of the building. By now, you are probably thinking to yourself, Wait a minute, this has nothing to do with Jaws. And you're right, it doesn't. By gorgeous, the girls are pretty one note, meant to be not much more than cannon fodder for the house and jail based for the audience. Except for Kung Fu, she's awesome. This is all probably made to highlight the girl's quirkness, all of which display behaviors who are either unladylike or juvenile, hence why none of them get to the end of the flick, unlike Gorgeous who, while clearly emotionally mature at the beginning of the story, comes out of the whole ordeal transformed by it. Literally, as she is fused with her auntie? I really don't know exactly what happened there, it was is way too esoteric for words. She definitely becomes a different person, that's for sure. A woman to be more specific. During their final moments together in this nightmare, an already possessed gorgeous comforts fantasy in her chest in the most motherly way imaginable. Later, when she finally meets her stepmother again at the very end, not only are they perfectly capable to talk in equal terms for the first time, Recognizing each other as equals, Gorgeous also demonstrates grace and kindness towards the visitor who comes to her house, encapsulating all the qualities of a Yamato Nadeshiko, the perfect Japanese woman. Her childish friends may one day join her when they have grown up, but right then she's the only one to have fully embraced her role in that society. Or perhaps I'm reading way too much into this film and the whole thing really is just the absurd reveries of a hyperactive child and her way too permissive father. Because House spends the full extent of its 88 minutes of runtime throwing every conceivable movie making trick at our faces in an attempt to keep our eyes peeled at the screen, otherwise we might miss something. And you really don't want to miss anything on this one, because the sheer creativity and variety of all this insanity is absolutely staggering. No two sequences are the same, as the director pulls a completely different approach for each one. If a character is supposed to suffer an accident, Obayashi will use stop motion to make his suffer the most over the top and slapstick accident possible. If another scene has one of the girls being eaten alive by a piano, her pieces will float across the screen surrounded by the visual artifacts of a poorly made blue screen effect. Simple scenes like Gorgeous' stepmother introduction, or even the first moments of the film when we get to meet the girls, are shot in a surreal and vigorous way very reminiscent of other work, which makes sense considering the roots of the director 
and it's funny to note how many of the tricks he was pioneering here would later become mainstays for the music video boom of the following decade, essentially segmenting themselves into the mainstream. Every cut, every framing, every set and special effect was made to call attention to itself, something that in other films would be absolutely detrimental to the experience. But since this one is one long string of such experimentations, it becomes a fundamental part of the experience. There is truly never a dull moment, as we jump from one absurd set piece to another, proving there is nothing random about all the crazy hijinks presented to us. Everything was carefully crafted to provide us with a good laugh, a good thrill, or just a good seizure. In short, this is far from just a quirky random movie. It's an experiment in what was possible to achieve with then current technology in terms of horror and comedy, a piece of avant-garde movie making that somehow made it into the mainstream circuit and from there managed to ingrain itself into pop culture. And to think that it was Toho's aggressive apathy during the 1970s that allowed a net director with a hard-on for throwing everything at the wall to make one of the most unique and successful films of their catalog. So there it is, my end of year recommendation for those of you looking for a good time with laughs, scares and epileptic episodes. There are few movies quite like Hauser, and rewatch it made me appreciate it much more than I ever thought was possible. So thanks for the suggestion. <laughs> Just a reminder that next week I'll be doing the end of year Q&A so don't forget to leave me your questions in the comments below. Please don't let it flop, but just in case it does, I would like to thank all of you for the amazing year and wish you a very Merry Christmas and the absolute best of New Year's. Until next time and have a good one.